Hi, Shannon Waller here, and welcome to the Team Success Podcast. Very recently, I had an experience that I really wanted to share with you because I think it lends some very important insight to certain aspects of teamwork and certain projects. So the title of this one is When to Kill a Project. So the origin of this project, and this pertains to the story, is that Catherine Nomura and Julia Waller and I had written Unique Ability, Creating the Life You Want about 12, 13 years ago now. And then we recognized that after 10 years, we knew a lot more about Unique Ability than we did the first time even though we knew a lot then. So Julia and Catherine really bore down and created Unique Ability 2.0 Discovery. And it's just a brilliant book. You know, I just love how they've articulated it. Julia wrote the incredible workbook, which is like sitting down with Julia and being coached by her. I always tell people, take yourself out to a cafe. And it's like Julia's across the table from you because she really wrote it in a very personal, intimate way to help you discover what your unique ability is. So what had happened is in the first book, we had a few pages. I thought it was four to six. It turned out to be two about unique ability teamwork. We just thought, Julia even said to me, it's like, we're going to take the teamwork section out of the book, you can play discovery, and we need to write a new book on that. And you'll be a key person in that process. And I was kind of like, okay, sounds good. So after Unique Ability Discovery 2.0 was done, then different people were tasked with writing the book. So Catherine said, okay, I'm kind of done writing books right now. So we passed over to Myrna. Myrna took like pounds, inches of paper and tried to weed her way through it. And after four months, wasn't experiencing a lot of traction. So then we had Jane on the team and she, of course, was my co-writer and editor on multiplication by subtraction. We thought, great, we'll give it to Jane. <laughs> Let's give it to the newer person. And then she and I have been working on it. So we booked recordings and interviewing. Anyway, this poor book and poor Jane, you know, she's got even more inches of paper now and pounds of paper to wade through. And we've been tackling this for about 10 months now and just not getting very far. What Jane had written was spectacular, but she was just finding it very tough going. And, you know, it was almost like wading through mud. Fortunately, our lovely Nicole was scheduling regular meetings. So I walked into a meeting with Jane, and she had a tool out in front of her, and it's our tool at Strategic Coach called the Experience Transformer. And you know when someone starts a meeting with the Experience Transformer, there's something that needs to be transformed. <laughs> and because of a couple of things that I knew about what was going on with her, going back to school and getting some more education, I thought, you know, okay, this is interesting, Jane. I can pretty much guess what this is about. Do you want to delay the project or should we just kill it? And she goes, yeah, let's do that. And we're like, okay. <laughs> Part of the reason why I could approach it with kind of joy or glee, actually, was because about 10 days before I had had this insight after talking through with my husband what I was going to be doing with the client about how they could build a self-managing company. I was like, well, first they need to do this, and then they need to do that. You know, they need to be really self-aware on their profiles, and they need to understand their core values, and then they need to put this in place and set their one-year goals. And I laid out this whole practical process for people to build a unique ability team that would produce a self-managing company. And I went, oh, man, this would be an awesome book. Literally, that's the thought I had. And then when I came back to the office on Monday, I put it into a Trello board. Trello is a great project management software, so I could lay it out. So I had this kind of like secret version in my computer, in my head. So when I met with Jane, I was like, okay, let's kill this version because I have a better idea. <laughs> What do you think? And both of us just felt this enormous sense of relief. And I thought, you know, and I actually wrote that down my positive focus. So when I was coaching my fabulous group of team leaders, I shared with them just how powerful it was to put a stop to something that was not working. But I don't think that that's an easy thing to do. And I want you to think right now in your life, teamwork projects you're involved in, projects on your own you're involved in, even with your family, where you've got intention, you've got a commitment, you want to get something done, but you have zero momentum, zero traction. We've been talking at Coach a lot about who, not how, which is a brilliant idea that came out of Dan Sullivan's and Dean Jackson's Joy of Procrastination podcast. So like find your who. If it's just that you don't have to do the how, find the right who. Well, we've had all the right who's. We have the right people. And if we can't do it, not going to happen. So we kind of dissected what worked and what didn't about the whole thing. So our teamwork was great. Jane's talents are incredible. I have deep knowledge about unique ability teamwork. But what didn't work in some ways was it kind of wasn't our idea. 
you know, it was like decided by Catherine and Julia that something wasn't going to fit into this book, so we needed another one. By the way, totally logical. Logical, logical decision. I would make the same decision. Doesn't mean necessarily that we owned it in that way. So that was one thing that we learned. Learned that it just was not happening the way that other people had envisioned it. And this is critical. At least my projects, I'm going to suggest that most successful projects really start with someone who is both emotionally and intellectually engaged with it. Intellectually, I was engaged, but emotionally, I had not taken, I would say, full ownership of someone else's picture of the book. I had a part of the book, the practical part, that I was super jazzed about and excited about. And that part was crystal clear. The rest of it was about clear as mud. So really interesting to determine what really hit for us and what was off. So why this is so critical is sometimes we just beat our head against the wall for so long and people are putting forth their effort and their time and their creativity and their intellect to no avail. And at some point, you have to decide when it's appropriate to (laughs) reshuffle the cards and either come at the goal a different way, stop it because maybe there's something better that everyone needs to be doing, decide whether or not the purpose still needs to be fulfilled in this particular way, or maybe there's something more important now. It's key to reevaluate. Now, am I still committed to writing a book on unique ability teamwork? Yes, absolutely. But now it's going to be a different book. It's going to be much more practical, which I'm excited about. I want a practical guide. If you're familiar with my team success handbook or multiplication by subtraction, I I love getting people really clear so they can take action. Just knowing about something intellectually, hmm, that's nice, but I want you to be able to do something with it. That's actually what matters to me. So that's what it will be. So as soon as I can find some writing time and Jane and I can sit down, we'll start on the new version of the book. Actually, there's pieces of it already written. There's lots of stuff lying around that we could integrate and pull together. And we're kind of just going to not ditch, but change the focus, which I'm very excited about, as you can probably tell. So part of the reason why I thought this was a relevant conversation is because I know I hear about this all the time when people are involved in projects that, again, they're like, oh, we're still trying to figure this out. It's not happening. We're not getting the feedback we thought. We're not getting the resonance with the market that we thought we would. I'm not sure if we should still be doing this. Well, you might need to be the courageous one here to throw up the red flag. And if we look at why we don't stop projects and why we keep going, even when we kind of feel it's hopeless, and this is true for entrepreneurs and team members, by the way, it's because we feel this sense sometimes of guilt, maybe we should have known better, or shame, maybe we're just not smart enough to figure it out. So there's all of these negative or not creative emotions (laughs) that come into play. So we keep going on this path that's not working. This is not strategic. It does not make sense. We can stop. And there's real power in stopping and going, hey, by the way, the person who calls it and says this isn't working is a strong, courageous person. So this might be you. (laughs) I love when we have tools for it. So at Coach, we have things like the Experience Transformer. So the Experience Transformer, even if you're not familiar with our tool, is really simple. It is, what's the experience in three lines, not 30, that you want to transform? What about the project is working? So no project's a complete disaster. You're always going to get some benefit after working on it for a while. You're going to learn something at least. What about the project is not working? Knowing what you know now, what are your brainstorming ideas for what you would do differently? And then finally, what's your agreed upon course of action or new set of strategies? So those four sections really, what's working, what's not is one section, is really what comprises the experience transformer. I love thinking it through that way because it takes out so much of the emotion and just deals with the facts. I mean, you can put it down on paper for yourself or together with your colleague. It's just so useful to go, oh, this makes so much sense now. Here's what we should do differently. So you're left, you're not left with just stopping something and no no plan of action. You leave with a plan. Or our other tool, the impact filter, which you can read about in our fabulous quarterly book called the Extraordinary Impact Filter, about what is the intention? What do you want to create? What's the purpose, importance, and ideal outcome? Best result if you take action, worst result if you don't, and then what, again, your success strategies. So those two tools for me are great ways to re-look at something and get clearer on what something needs to be rather than perhaps what it is. So taking advantage of those kinds of thinking, I find tools make it easier to take it out of the personal and the emotional and into the thoughtful and strategic way of doing things. Now, your emotions are a great clue that something needs to change, but if we just keep it there, we're not involved all the parts of our mind that are so critical. So I want to leave you with some clues about 
when is a project, you know, do you need to look at it? There's lots of projects that need to keep going, and probably most of them. There's very few that actually need to be killed, to put it in a dramatic fashion. However, here are some of my insights about what doesn't work, and you can probably add to this list. Number one is no momentum. There is no traction despite intelligent, talented, committed people putting their best on it. That would be a clue. If whatever your destination is, you can't get there from here. That was my conclusion about our Unique Ability Teamwork book. If you don't have passion, and it's interesting, I have passion for a Unique Ability Teamwork book that's really practical, but I didn't have passion. I actually could not grasp part of how I understood people wanted the book to be. And if I can't do that, I can't own it. You know, there's a part of ownership that's missing. And I'm as committed to Unique Ability Teamwork as anyone I know. So that's not the problem. I just couldn't get committed to that particular version or vision of it. So that was really key. So if it was not fully your own idea, then you need to look at that because then there's some, there's a question mark and there's something holding you back and you need to listen to that and pay attention and dig a little deeper to find out what the issue is. And if there's just a lot of trying and not getting the result, that's another massive clue that something is missing. Maybe it's a piece of knowledge, maybe it's a capability, maybe it's a skill, maybe it's technology, but there's something missing and you can't get there from here. So again, that's a beginning of a list. I feel like other people could add to more of that, but I have to tell you how refreshing it was to go, this version, this approach is not working. We need to stop and start over with a fresh approach. By the way, it's often completely fine to just go, you know what? This was a really good idea three, five, 10, 12 months ago. It's not a good idea anymore. We should just stop. And if anyone feels bad about that, and sometimes you can have a little bit of withdrawal, I would say just appreciate, take a moment to do, for example, an experience transform and say, okay, what did I learn from this? Any situation that we can learn from goes from being a negative to a positive. It's when we have an unexamined circumstance that we haven't learned anything from. Those are the painful ones. I find that even if it was hard to go through it, but I learned an incredibly valuable lesson at the end, it was worth it. So give your experience meaning before you just stay upset about it. I think that's a really critical point. So sometimes if you just have to end it and start fresh and on a completely new tack, great. Or sometimes you just need to take a completely new approach and then figure out what will work. Again, that thinking process of what worked, what didn't, what are we going to do differently next time is key. And then you'll know that you need to have a really clear, focused approach. You need a clear shot from the beginning to reaching your end goal. Make sure that commitment is super strong. Recognize that, you know, in our four C's growth process, that it starts with commitment, Then going through that feeling of courage, which is when you're like, oh my gosh, I don't quite know how to accomplish what I just set out to do. And out of that, you develop the capabilities and pull them together. And that gives you a new, stronger, higher level of confidence with which you can take on new challenges. So this is a growth process. And I think it takes commitment and courage to kill a project and to say, okay, we need to stop. And then we need to start a new version of this or do something completely different with the same talents and capabilities that you have. So I wanted to share this with you. It's not often that we talk about killing a project being a positive thing, but in our case, it most certainly was. We're both refreshed and re-energized to start something new and better, which is always what you want to do with this. And I know that that will be really useful, at least in some aspect of your own teamwork and your own life. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know at questionsastrategiccoach.com. As always, thanks for listening. And here's to your team success. Shannon here, and thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard today, please take a moment to rate the Team Success Podcast on iTunes, and we'd love it if you'd share the podcast with anyone else who could benefit. If you're interested in learning more about the Strategic Coach Program for Entrepreneurs, visit us at strategiccoach.com or the Strategic Coach channel on YouTube. For free downloads and more Team Success strategies, visit teamsuccesshandbook.com. Team Success Handbook.com.